All right, let's talk about Desmond Ritter. I had a, a front row seat at this game. Not actually front row seat, upper deck, because that's, I don't know. I like upper deck. You can see the game better there anyway. But uh, I was at this football game, I should say. And it was a very interesting one. Desmond Ritter made some plays, made some mistakes. And I think that, you know, it's kind of weird where I feel like the reaction I saw online People were acting like the Falcons lost the football game. A lot of criticism towards Ritter. So I wanted to make a video kind of talking about the positives and negatives of him. Is it actually a concern? Is it Taylor Heineke time? I think absolutely not. I think that he should be the guy. And I'm going to hopefully explain why in this video. So like first, something like this. I think that Ritter's done a really good job at hitting the open throws. And I know that that's kind of what you expect a quarterback to do. But still, it is an important trait to have. Not every quarterback does. He does hit the open throws pretty consistently. Something like this. It's zone coverage. You have it's John U. Smith going to try and get into a gap in coverage. Watch as Ritter's going to take the snap. He is going to look down the field, and you have an opening here. You do. But Ritter's throw is going to be really well done. They're able to get a completion. It was not a hard throw to make. And definitely, I think that Ritter is certainly benefited from being in a pretty good offense. Like, that's undeniably a pretty big benefit here for the Atlanta Falcons, is that he is in a pretty good offense. But also, like, again, if we're talking Heineke versus Ritter, like, they're going to be in this offense. So being a quarterback who can do nice things in this specific offense, I think that that's, you know, good. I think there's value in that. And he made some impressive throws, I thought, in this. He didn't make a lot. Like, listen, undeniably, a big part of what why Ritter's stats look, will look good in specific games is because of the offense, the situation around him. But he did make a couple of nice plays, too. And, like, this one is one of them, where it's going to be a zone coverage play. It's actually former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Scotty Miller, who's going to be running really just a clear-out route here, run a deep route, hopefully get the safety to stay deep over the middle that could be open. That, that's what you're expecting to have happen here if you're Atlanta. However, Ritter's going to take the snap, runs a play action, and notice that the safety drops down, so he's going to throw over the top. He's going to try and hit Scotty Miller, which is not a bad decision whatsoever, I don't think. The issue, Carlton Davis is doing what he can to hang with Scotty Miller. So this is not a wide open throw whatsoever. There is definitely still some you know opportunity defensively here for Tampa Bay. This is going to take a good throw. And this is a beautiful throw. So th this was his best throw of the game for sure. But I, I do want to kind of talk up the, the good plays that he had because I did think he had some good throws. And again, long-term answer, well, we'll get to, get to that in a second. I don't know about that. But for sh a short term, for right now, he is capable of making things happen. And, and we saw that. And even something like this, you know, listen, there's been a lot of talk about due to uh, Falcons trade for a Kirk Cousins or maybe even a Ryan Tannehill try to reunite with, uh, you know, Arthur Smith and all of that. But I do think that to some degree, this is something that they like that Ritter can bring to the table that, you know, maybe Tannehill could also bring to the table, but like Kirk Cousins couldn't, which is what's going to happen is it's zone coverage and you see the way this concept could work. You have several routes going from the offense's left to the offense's right. It is going to be a play action and Ritter is going to run in that direction. Watch as you're going to see Ritter does run this play action, rolls out towards the bottom of the screen. And right here, again, is there a throw he can make? I mean, you could maybe go all the way across your body to try and make a throw uh, the one furthest towards the left of the screen, but that's probably not a good idea. You could throw it all the way to the one all the way on the right side of the screen, but you know, down the field, but there's a defender in the area and there is a defender just off screen further deep. So probably not a good idea either. Worth noting the situation, it's a second down and five. The first down marker is the 35-yard line. And watch as Ritter is going to use his legs to scramble up and pick up that first down. This is something that Desmond Ritter does a very good job of, is using his legs. I think that is a real benefit and a real thing that the Falcons like about him is his rushing ability. They had some designed runs in this game, uh, which, you know, were able to work out, I thought, pretty well. There is that added value. So those are the positives. I want to start off with the positives. That is the argument of why you have Desmond Ritter continue playing. You don't go and try to make a decision. You don't try to move off of him. But now let's get into the negatives, and there were three big negatives in this game. You know, passing the ball was good. Passing the ball was very good. These were the issues. Three red zone fumbles. This one was the least damaging, although they're all still going to be damaging. This is at the 11-yard line. It's a third down and goal. So, you know, for Tampa Bay, their pass rushers are in a bit of an advantage because all you have to do here is try to, uh, you know, pass rush. They're not running the football here. That's not happening. And in fact, there isn't even a running back in the backfield. So you know, 
it's going to be a you know uh, a passing play. Watch as when this play begins, Desmond Ritter takes the snap. You know, uh, it's one of those unfortunate plays where right as he was throwing it, looked like he had a bit of a window. Could have potentially been a touchdown. Probably would have been incomplete, I would assume. But instead, gets hit as he's thrown. Ball comes out. Tampa Bay is able to recover. I think you'll live with that. I do. I think if you're a Falcons fan, it, it's obviously unfortunate, but that is one of those plays that it does happen. This play is a lot more inexcusable, but also a lot more fixable. So in some ways, it's maybe less concerning, even if it is more frustrating. So it was actually kind of a hilarious sequence where Tampa Bay challenged, thinking that there was a, a fumble at the one-yard line, ended up not being the case. It was down at the one-yard line, meaning that the Falcons... Uh, Keep possession here. So, okay, good job by, you know, uh, Drake London to not fumble. Got his hand uh, out of bounds. Okay, so now it's going to be a, you know, first down and goal at the one. And Desmond Ritter just, you know, uh, the, you know, I don't know if it's him or the center or whatever, but they don't get the snap there, which you just, you can't do in this spot. Uh, I don't know if they were just working a little bit too quickly, given the goal line situation. You know, I always talk about how Peyton Manning would always say, if you do this one time in a season, it's one too many. You should never have this happen. You can never botch a handoff like this, botch a snap. They're too important. You have to get, clean these up. That was a tough one. But again, Something you hope gets cleaned up. That's not something that I'm like long term is concerning. These first two, you know, unfortunate, but it is what it is. And also going over here, this is the third fumble. And again, the situation here is crucial. If Atlanta gets a touchdown here, the ball game's over. I mean, I'm sorry, the ball game is over. It's not officially over. Six minutes left. 10 point game. You can come back from that. But the way that this Falcons defense is shutting down the Buccaneers offense, the game is over if the Atlanta Falcons are able to win this foot, uh, get the get the ball into the end zone here. So watch what happens. Desmond Ritter is going to take the snap. He runs a play action, is going to roll out towards the uh, end zone. And it looks like he's about to score a touchdown, right? That's what it looks like. And Anton Winfield isn't even going to try and make a tackle. He's going to try and knock the ball out because that's kind of his only option at this point and like listen Winfield great hustle play good job not giving up you, you know got to give him credit for sure but if you're Desmond Ritter put both hands on the football and dive into the end zone and you're gonna have a touchdown this is not a difficult situation you have to play smart here Ritter only has one hand and kind of coast into the end zone a little bit. The ball got knocked out just before it reached the goal line and falls out of bounds. And now Tampa Bay, they got the ball back. I mean, they eventually were able to tie the game. You know, Ritter made a nice play uh, sort of towards the end there that allowed the Falcons to win it. But these are inexcusable mistakes. Here's the good news for the Falcons. These are also fixable mistakes. These are things that you can clean up. I mean, that again, that first play, to me, that's more of a good pass rush play than anything else, the first fumble. The other two are really mental mistakes more than anything by Atlanta, and those are things you can fix, and those are things you expect to be fixed as the season progresses. He's a young player. He's still getting the hang of things, and it, it makes sense that he's going to make a few rookie mistakes here as he's still essentially in his first season. He played a small handful of games last year, basically in his first season. So for me, like, listen, you should always be looking at an upgrade at every position. And if you can find a way to get Kirk Cousins, all right, I wouldn't hate that decision. If you can find a way to get Ryan Tannehill, all right, I wouldn't hate that decision. I don't think I don't think that Taylor Heineke is an upgrade. I, I just don't. I think Desmond Ritter is the better player. I think he's doing a lot of nice things here for Atlanta. He is doing some bad things as well. But uh, I don't think that he is the issue. And again, does he kind of have to be in a perfect situation right now for everything to work? Yes. But I think I would take the guy who at least can work when he's in a perfect situation than someone, you know, who is just going to be a complete unknown in this offense. Uh, so unless it's someone you know is good, uh, I think I stick with Redder. Uh, I don't look to move off of him. That's how I view it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.